Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Gyan Sampada. In some of our previous classes, we were dealing with quantum mechanical concept relating to angular momentum where we studied about the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions of j square and jz that is square of angular momentum operator and z component of angular momentum. So in previous two classes, we just went through the whole derivation using some of the ladder operators to find out the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So as it was a lengthier process, today I have come up with a very short and sweet approach for the same that is eigenvalues and eigenvectors of j square and jz. So instead of j square and jz, we will make use of the operator l square and lz. So the difference is that j means total angular momentum and l means orbital angular momentum. So in j, we will consider the contribution of orbital angular momentum as well as spin angular momentum, which is a very common thing. So only the numbering is going to change, which we will see later. So if you just compare today's class with the previous classes, then clearly we can understand the difference. So let's get started with today's class. So first we will deal with the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions of L square operator. And for this, we are going to consider the eigenvalue equation for L square operator, especially in spherical polar coordinates. So the whole derivation of this is already done in our previous classes of quantum mechanics, which you can get under the playlist section named angular momentum. So directly I am going to consider the final expression. So the eigenvalue equation in general, we know that whenever an operator is operated on a wave function, if it gives the same wave function with a constant, then that wave function is called as eigenfunction and the constant associated with that wave function is called as eigenvalue and that whole equation is called as eigenvalue equation. So here operator is L square. And now in place of L square, we will just substitute the value of L square operator in spherical polar coordinates. That is nothing but minus h cross square into 1 by sin theta dou by dou theta of sin theta dou by dou theta plus 1 by sin square theta dou square by dou phi square into the wave function which we have considered here is y. And remember this y is depending on theta and phi and after the operation it is going to give us the same wave function with a constant that we have taken as lambda h cross square. So one thing we need to remember is that L square or the angular momentum it is always related to the angular part of the Schrodinger equation. So if we just look at it we can simplify by cancelling h cross square on both the sides so that we get this whole bracket term into y plus lambda y is equals to 0. We have just rearranged the above equation. So we can call this as the eigenvalue equation for L square itself. And it is clear that it is the angular part of Schrodinger equation of a system moving under spherically symmetric potential which is V of R. So again, this whole derivation, you can get it in the playlist section of quantum mechanics where we have dealt with hydrogen atom. And if we look at it, we know that the solution for lambda is L into L plus 1 and thus the eigenvalue here we have considered as lambda h cross square will be equal to L into L plus 1 into H cross square and this whole thing is obtained from the derivation of a particle moving in spherically symmetric potential itself. So for more details just go through the playlist section of this channel and thus 
From the same we can say that the eigenfunction corresponding to that will be equal to epsilon into 12 plus 1 into L minus mod M factorial divided by 4 pi into L plus mod M factorial into P of cos theta into E raised to I M phi. So if you remember this derivation then we can understand that this eigenfunction consists of the phi solution as well as the theta solution associated with the normalization constant and here L is the orbital angular momentum quantum number which takes the value 0, 1, 2, 3 so on and M is the magnetic quantum number which takes the values 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 so on that is integers and epsilon depends on M that is if M is greater than 0 then epsilon will be minus 1 raised to M whereas if M is less than 0 or equal to 0 then epsilon will be equal to 1 and this P of cos theta is the legendary polynomial function. So if we just put the values of L and M easily we can solve for the eigenfunction corresponding to different values. So this is in brief the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions of L square operator and next we will move on to the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions corresponding to LZ operator that is Z component of angular momentum. So here again as such we know that in spherical polar coordinate system operator LZ is given as minus IH cross dou by dou phi. If you consider X and Y component it is a little bit lengthier one but Z component is just this much simple that is minus IH cross dou by dou phi which we have already derived in our previous classes. And now we just need to operate this LZ using a wave function. So when this operator LZ is operated on a wave function what will happen we need to check. So when it is done we observe that we get back a constant with the same wave function that is y l m of theta comma phi and the constant is m h cross. So there are many approaches to solve this. Directly we can write the eigenvalue as m h cross. However, I will explain some short steps which will justify this answer. So again considering the eigenvalue equation. So xi is the wave function or eigenfunction. A is the eigenvalue, LZ is the operator. Substituting for LZ, that is LZ operator is nothing but minus IH cross dou by dou phi. Operating on the wave function xi and RHS keeping as it is. So clearly it is a simple differential equation which when solved we get the solution of xi as F into E raised to I A phi by H cross. So F is a constant we can call it as a normalization constant and exponential of I A phi by H cross. A is the eigenvalue. So here just we need to bring this minus I H cross into RHS side. So it will be A by minus I H cross. So 1 by I is minus I that will be minus minus will become plus i a by h cross into xi. So if we need to find out the solution for xi, we just need to integrate it over the domain with respect to phi. So integration of d xi will be equal to xi and integration of i a by h cross into xi with respect to d phi will give us this solution. And here f we can just say that it is an arbitrary function of r and theta and the exponential term is with respect to phi because we clearly observe that lz is only corresponding to phi. There is no other variables as such and for the validity of the wave function it has to be single valued and if phi is changing to 5 plus 2 pi 
then also the wave function is going to remain same because 2 pi is something like 360 degree. So again coming back to the same point as that of the origin it is just going to explain about the periodicity due to which the wave function xi is going to remain as it is. So just we need to substitute this in the solution of xi. So xi is equals to f into e raised to i a phi by h cross. In place of phi we will just substitute phi plus 2 pi. So f and f will get cancelled. Exponential of i a phi by h cross will get cancelled and we are remaining with e raised to i a 2 pi by h cross equals to 1. And we know that this is in the form of e raised to i theta where theta is 2 pi a by h cross and e raised to i theta is nothing but cos theta plus i sin theta and if you take different values for theta like 0, 90 degree, 180 degree, 360 degree, anything like that then there are conditions when you get 1 and the condition is that whenever your 2 pi a by h cross will be equal to some multiple of 2 pi that is 2 m pi we get this value. So if you just need to cross verify you can just put the values of m. If m is equals to 0 then 2 pi a by h cross will be equal to 0 e raised to 0 is 1. Then putting it equal to 1 so here it will be equal to 2 pi e raised to 2 pi i it is nothing but cos 2 pi plus i sin 2 pi. 2 pi is 360 degrees so sin 2 pi will be equal to 0 but cos 2 pi will be equal to 1. Again it is valid. Again m is equals to 2 it will be 4 pi. Again the same thing will happen and finally this condition is going to be valid only when you consider 2 pi a by h cross is equals to 2 m pi. And if you simplify this we get the value of a is equals to mh cross because 2 pi and 2 pi will get cancelled and we had considered the eigenvalue for this eigenvalue equation as a. So finally we have arrived at the eigenvalue corresponding to Lz operator which is equals to mh cross and this is what we have written here. So in these small steps we can just find out the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions of Lz where your wave function or eigenfunction remains the same that is ylm of theta comma phi which we have already observed in the previous slide. So just to sum up today's class let's go through the summary. We have just studied about the operators especially two operators square of the angular momentum and z component of angular momentum and also we found out what are the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions corresponding to these operators and clearly for both the operators we found that the eigenfunctions give us the spherical harmonics which is y lm of theta comma phi is equals to epsilon times 2l plus 1 into l minus mod m factorial divided by 4 pi into l plus mod m factorial into plm of cos theta e raised to i m phi. So for both the operators the wave function or the eigen function remains the same. So the whole in detail derivation you can get it where we have solved for particle in a spherically symmetric potential or even the same you can get in the hydrogen atom derivation, the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions of it. And finally, the corresponding eigenvalues for L square operator was found to be L into L plus 1 into H cross square and for Lz it was found to be MH cross where L is an orbital angular momentum quantum number and M is magnetic quantum number. So in this manner, in short, we can just sum up the details about the eigenfunctions and eigenvalues of these two operators which are of prime importance and in detail with respect to all the necessary steps 
we have already solved the derivation in our previous classes especially by making two separate parts for the same derivation by explaining the ladder operators also and in today's class just by taking the previous knowledge which we have already solved in spherical polar coordinates we have arrived at this conclusion so this is it for today's class so if you understood some details regarding today's concept then do like this and share with your friends and also for different physics related content subscribe to my channel gyan sampada so study well stay tuned and thank you